up guys i'm going to show you how to do a mutation in graphql so that way we can do create a new user and it show it here so if you don't know what this is and you don't know right now i have a server up and running and i have a front-end react app this is the react app right here over here running on port 3000 i have a server running so if you don't know what these are and you'd like to get them set up i'll put links in the description below to help you get set up so let's get right into this. So the mutation that I want to run is create user uh, to create a new user um, for this. So I can just create new users here and I want to see the user, the new user that I add there. So we're going to run this mutation. And then after we run that, we're going to call all users so we can see that our new user was actually added. So we can see all of them. So the first thing I want to do is hop back over here and instead of running um, get user, so I have a get you user mutation, right? Or sorry, query. Um, instead of running this and only getting you, the admin user, what I would like to do is do all users. And then in our app over here, in our GraphQL message, now this is an array. So get user should return an array of objects so prop types dot array of and then pass that in oops so we just fixed our prop types and now we're getting an array of usernames and this will no longer be get users this will be all users and then here all users all users and so this will be an array of users so really we just need to return this I guess we should say or an empty array so if all users isn't there so users and then here we can just do a mapping of them so users is an array of objects with username so I'm just going to do, right here we will do users.map and we'll do, let's also, so I was going to add a key here, so I'm also going to grab the ID, I'll just make it easier. So X and we'll just, use, let's use U, so for each user. We're going to create an m tag, and here we'll do u.username inside that m tag. And now we can get rid of this m tag stuff here. And I'm just going to drop this to a new line so we can see what's going on. All right, here we go. So we're gonna say my username is, and then we're gonna go through each user, show the M, and we're gonna give a key. You need to add a key whenever you're doing a mapping. I'm gonna do u.id. It's much better to give the ID for the key than to do the index of an array, um, because the ID always stays the same for each object. So we have this, and then I'm just gonna put like a, uh, let's, see, let's see how that looks. So we come back just see all right so they're mashed together so let's put a comma <clears throat> comma space and we should have a comma at the end that's fine and let's put a space there too okay so now we can see if a new user was added it would be on this the end of this list right uh, space is not really getting added there maybe we should put a comma here Put a space at the beginning. Yep, that looks good. Okay, so I'm gonna create a new component. And I'm gonna create it, well actually before we create the component, I'm gonna actually just grab the mutation that we need, which is this. Paste that in here. Now, for now, we're going to hard code the mutation. 
Um, in the next video, I'll show you how to pass in a variable. So we're going to just say, I am a new user. This is the crappy username. You know what? We're just going to call him Bob. So whenever we run this mutation, we're going to create a user called Bob. Now we're going to come over here. We need to import this. And by the way, we, I just replaced this, which I didn't want to. Can I put it back? Cool, I can. I did not mean to just override this. And it looks like they're making a folder for queries. So I'm going to make a folder for mutations. And the mutation is going to be um, create user. And this should be dot gql. And real quick, let's rename this because we changed it from all get user to all users. So in our app here, if we scroll up to the top, we're going to have to import all users. So I'm just going to do search and replace. Um, and you know what? I'll show you guys how you can do this if you want to just in this. Oops, did not mean to push that. So search and replace, get user, we'll replace it with all, uh, all users. Um, we get four ones, and cool thing about this, we can just say files to include, app.js, and then we see the four. And I'm actually curious where, where oh, okay, right there. Yep, that's good. We're going to replace all of them. We don't need you, and we're good to go. So I just searched and replaced those. So we now have all user. So all user is that. So back to our mutation. Sorry for the V tour or the detour. And here we're just going to create our Bob. So I paste in the mutation. We get Bob. Let's just get the oops. Just get the ID since we're pretty much going to be ignoring that the return value of mutation. Um, yeah. That looks good. Let's just import it in here. And we can write ourselves a little comment, GraphQL mutations. And we're going to do create user. And we're going to get this from mutations. And it's going to be create user. Oops. So now we can create a little component down here. So this is our kind of like main app. So we're going to create a link here. That's actually going to be, and we're actually just going to, I think, or we can create a button that we click and just create the user. So why don't we just create this class, class um, mutation button, extends react dot component. And then in our render method, and you know what? There's no reason to make this a, uh, a regular class. We can just make it a pure function. So const uh, mutation button. And we we should not have that, all right? And then we're going to be getting passed in a mutation because we're going to do at GraphQL right here and we're going to pass in create user. So the create user function is going to be passed as a mutation to our button right here. And then we can do here is button and then on click we can say first let's make sure oops on click I'm just going to do a console out to make sure everything renders real quick. And if it does render, then we'll add our mutation logic here. Um, create a user. We're getting red lines everywhere. All right, experimental support. That's fine. Okay, it just doesn't, everything's stemming from this. And I'm actually not sure if you can do a tag like this on a peer function. So we're about to find out if that even works. Um, so yeah, sure, why not? We'll stick it right here. Um, this will be mutation button. 
All right, let's see if we're getting any errors with this. Model defined lean decorators must be attached to a class. Okay, so I was gonna do a function like this, but it doesn't look like it likes it, so we'll just create class extends. And actually, just to show you guys, you don't have to do the decorator either. Like this, I could actually put it right here too. GraphQL create user. I, I think this works. We're about to find out. Uh, experimental support. I don't know why it's saying experimental support. We should not be getting any experimental support warnings. We're not doing it. Uh, valid must be returned. Okay, didn't like that either. But we could do const new component is equal to GraphQL. Create user. You know what? Let me just make sure my syntax is right. This is how a mutation works because we're using the Apollo library. You notice how when they do a GraphQL, they wrap um, their mutation um, and then their actual class, they call it. So we want to do the same thing. We could do GraphQL, create user, and then we could call that on our mutation button. And now my mutation button, you know, let's name these better. Let me get rid of this. If this doesn't work also, because it might not, uh, I'll just use the tag, but I wanted to see if this did work because it should. Um, if it's, if it might be configured differently because we want to use a pure function when we can. That's nicer. So I'm going to call this. I'm just going to do an underscore because it's basically um, a mutation button, but we just need to name it differently. Mutation. You know, what? we'll call this M button. And this will call mutation button. I'm not actually. Let me know in the comments below if you if you know like what's a good naming schema for this, where I have my component which I then wrap with a GraphQL. What should I call my component and what should I call a new component after it's been like attached and now it's this GraphQL wrapper? I'm not. I never never know what to name these things. Okay. Anyway, let's let's see if that does work now. Um, it needs to be returned. Looks like something's configured off or I'm doing this slightly wrong. I don't know why it doesn't like it. I've used this in other. Uh, when I use create react app, I do it like this and it works. So I'm not sure if it's just being funky or what. So we'll just go ahead and create a class and do the at GraphQL, just like it is above. So create user and do a class mutation button extends react.component and then we're just going to have a render function. And then we're just going to grab, oh, hee <laughs> hee. I was like, I could have sworn this worked, right? Well, it's because I never removed this thing. Now we might be working. This is not tabbed over correctly. Okay, there we go. That looks good. Okay, now we're working nicely. Now if I go to inspect, console, clicked. Okay, because I was gonna say, I didn't think this would be just because I'm using React QL, this didn't work, because I've done this exact same thing in uh, Create React app. Okay, cool, so we know this worked, so now I can replace this with the mutation, just like that. And I'm going to make this an async function so I can do a wait. Um, but it doesn't really matter, right? We, we could get rid of this because we're fine just calling the mutation. We don't need the return value, right? If I want the return value, what I could do is like I was just doing actually. Oops, we could put a wait. could do an async function, a wait. You get const, you know, um, response. But I don't actually need the response to the mutation. I just want to create it. But in a future video, I will be showing you how that works, and we will actually be needing the response. So it's missing the prop validations. That's fine. I don't care about those. All right. So let's create a user. Mutation is not a function. All right. So something went. Something did not happen, right? Because we expect it to be passed in as the props. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put props here and I'm just gonna print this guy. So we can just see oops, what, what are the props. And actually, no, I don't even need to print, right? I could just click on this using React Dev Tools and I can see what props are passed. Because we should be, see look, we have this Apollo wrapper. Oh, haha, it's not mutation, it's mutate. So it's mutate, there we go. So just wrong naming. So now we refresh, well, not really refresh, it just auto happens, which is nice. Okay, nothing here, so it looks like it works. So if I refresh, we should see another user here. And we do, we see Bob, cool. So that is how you can set up a mutation. I just wanna summarize all the steps we took because I kinda was changing stuff and whatnot. So first thing, I created a mutation um, over here. So I could go into GraphQL. Um, what the thing I like to do is I actually just like to like type it out here what the mutation I want, and I'll copy and paste it over here in my editor. Um, so we pasted the mutation over here, um, and I also should get some uh, plugin for this next video. What I'll do is I'll uh, get a plugin for Visual Studio Code. So this is nice and pretty. But anyway, so we created this right. So we then imported it in our class up here right here. So now we have access to that mutation and then I added it to my component, my button component, um, using this syntax right here. So as you can see I passed in the component right here telling it what mutation I'd like this to have access to. And so now I can just use this um, mutate function which GraphQL gives me and I can call it and it will actually call the create user mutation for me. Um, and then I'm doing that when I click. And now I don't use this in but in button places. I use mutation button if I want to have access to the mutation. So that's how that's working. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in more GraphQL videos, I recommend subscribing because there's a lot going to be coming out. I'm just going to be keep doing iterations on this GraphQL and making it better and showing you step by step how you can set up this stuff with GraphQL and. Uh, talk to our server over here because it has a lot of capabilities we'd like to set up over here. Um, and I want to do an authentication video because that is a big topic with GraphQL and everyone does it differently and I like the way I have set up in one of my projects so I'm going to be showing you guys. So I recommend so hit the subscribe button now if you'd like to see this stuff and want to get notifications when it comes out because it's coming out real soon guys. Alright that's it for this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.